Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to share with you an updated Armani Privé collection video. I, the last time I did one of these videos was about two and a half years ago and my collection has over doubled. So I figured I'd share them with you and also rank them. So I'm gonna rank these in my least favorite to most favorite and also share the updated collection for you. So if you'd like to know all of that information, then keep watching. The last time I did this, I believe I had five or six bottles. I have 13 now, and I'm looking by the ending, by the end of the year to buy at least two or three more. So by the end of the year, I'll have at least 15 or 16 bottles of Armani Privé is what I have planned. Now, just to kind of let, remind you guys or refresh you guys, Armani Privé is my favorite Although depending on the day, it could be Maisel Lancome, higher end designer, kind of like their niche, like luxury line for their designer fragrances. And some people will be like, well, what about Tom Ford? What about Chanel? What about Dior? I love all of those houses, specifically, specifically the Chanel S exclusives, but there's something about the overall experience of the Armani Privé. I love the presentation. I love how each of the fragrances is both unique, but also really ridiculously wearable. And I just love how it was a gateway fragrance. Rose de Araby was a gateway fragrance into like higher end luxury fragrances for me. At the time, you know, I would buy niche and indie fragrances, but spending like $150 on a bottle of perfume, it would be like, it's not that I didn't see the value in it. I just hadn't broken that barrier yet. And with Rose de Araby, I did. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that everyone should go out and spend a ridiculous amount of money on perfume. Buy whatever you can within your budget. And I've said it before, just because you have samples, decants, celebrity fragrances, designer fragrances, niche fragrances, everyone's equal in this community as how they want to participate. Me, I like to have large collections of things that I collect and I like them to be very much well-rounded. And I had always wanted to add Rose d'Araby to my collection and there was a few other higher end fragrances when I really wanted to start collecting super seriously. And so the Rose d'Araby kind of broke that barrier and it made it more comfortable for me to collect and how I wanted to collect. This is how I always, I always wanted a very large extensive collection and I've been collecting for a while. It was just the higher end, more expensive fragrances I was a little intimidated by. That's how I collect, that's my collection. Again, just because I collect like this, doesn't mean that my collection or my place in this community is higher than people who might have just two bottles of Demeter or three bottles of a really um, affordable but amazing you know, designer niche house. However anybody wants to participate in this community is up to you. I'll never look down on anyone for having just samples, just these cans, just partials just celebrity, just designer. There's enough fragrances for us all to carve our own little hole in this community. And this is mine. This is the way that I like to do it. So I've ranked them from one to 13, but just because the ones on the lower end are down here, it's just because there was other amazing fragrances in this collection that beat them out. I still wear them and love these guys a lot. So we're gonna start with number 13 and it's Pierre de Lune. This is a really light, beautiful scent. It's really gorgeous. It's a little bit creamy. Um, I like to layer this scent with um, Iris Celadon, which is number 12. These two actually go really well together. I just find them to be really beautiful. Iris Celadon is nice. It's not my favorite Iris because I have like my favorite iris. I have like two or three favorite iris scents. There's like two more I need to get. Um, but I love this iris. This iris, although it's not my favorite iris, this iris is a little bit less challenging than that super powdery dominant-ness of say iris from Zerjoff. It just has a beautiful translucity translucence, there we go, to it. I can't say words, you know that. Uh, that I find to be really wearable, wearable, delicate, pretty, and just really great to layer with other scents too. Specifically Pierre de Lune, I like to layer. Number 11 is a beautiful scent, and I do really like this, but compared to the others, this one's a little bit more, I'd say, subtle. 
and it's Gardenia Antigua. This is one of the newer ones I added to my collection. I think it's really beautiful. I like how it has a little bit of musk to it, but it's still really light and it's a fantastic summertime scent. And then we have number 10, I believe. Is this 10? Yes, I can count high. <laughs> really bad at like counting up and down. This is Eau de Jade. This is a great tea scent, fantastic tea scent. It's really easy to wear, it's very effervescent. It's sparkly, it's refreshing, it's crisp, it's bright, it's beautiful. Now, it's higher up than the others because I wear this one more than the others, but I'd say that these four could easily kind of be grouped in to their own kind of like equality, like it's not like 13, 12, 11, 10, it's all, these are the ones that didn't make it into the top 10, but I kind of group these on how I wear them and my excitement to wear them. So now we're in the top 10, here we go. Uh, number 10, we have Pivon Suzho. I know I mispronounced that even though I can actually speak Japanese, even though it's been I'm close to 20 years, so I don't really remember anything. Japanese. I took Japanese in high school. I used to be semi-fluent. It's been like 20 years, so I can't even really understand anything except for konnichiwa. Um, but this is beautiful. So this one here, it's slightly floral. It's slightly peppery. It has a little bit of a punch to it, but it's still very light and delicate. And I love that it has that little bit of a peppery punch, but it's also really light and feminine. I think it's just really a divine scent. Number nine is Jasmine Kusumono. And I think this is one of the most demure, sensible, delicate, and weirdly enough, very articulate, and I mean that word, Jasmine fragrances. Every note is specifically created and put together to create this light, surreal, wispy, but still very much present jasmine fragrance. It's taken a very delicate hand from Mr. Rapoin, and I think that it's really a spectacular scent. Number seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm really bad at this. Vetiver Babylon. Um, I think now it's called I don't know what the new one's called, Hyver Vetiver something or Hyver Babylon. I don't know the new name for this, but this is the old name. I forget if they reformulated it too. But Vetiver Babylon is one of the fragrances that I'm obsessed with and I layer with everything. When I used to go out with a bunch of fragrance friends, um, Tina, the Critical Virgo, um, Max, who's a really fantastic guy and some other friends within the fragrance community when Carlos would come down we would all kind of get together and have like sniffing parties where we would be in a restaurant and smelling like 50 different fragrances or we'd go to someone's house and smell fragrances it was great but I always wanted to wear something <laughs> so I would either if I wanted to make um a, make myself present scent wise I would wear Oud Bouquet or if I knew I was going to be smelling a variety of different things, but I wanted to smell good and have something that didn't overpower any of the other scents, I would wear Vetiver Babylon. And this is a great scent to layer with other woody aromatics to give it a little bit more brightness. It just pairs really, really nicely. Number six. I don't know why I'm counting. We're in the top five now. I can do this. I, mean, I believe in me. Number six is Queer Amethyst. This out of the entire lineup is the sexiest fragrance. This is the fragrance that's going to make an impact. This is the fragrance that's going to grab attention. This out of all of these scents that I have in my collection, if you wanted to wear something to go on a date or to make an impression if you're going to a party, um, or if you want to wear something to the like to the club or to go dancing and you just kind of like want to grab people's attention, Queer Amethyst. This is so silky and velvety and sexy and sweet and rich. And that leather in there is just stunning. It is a supremely sexy fragrance. Number five is Rouge Malachite. I think this is great. And this is the limited edition bottle. I know it looks different than the other ones, but you know, I just get what I can get. This one I like because it's creamy, 
but it's still a little bright. And it's got a touch of sourness in the back, like a powdery sourness that kind of makes it smell really clean. And I just really love this creamy delight in summertime. But again, it's also just a little bit bright, but a little bit sour. It's just really interesting how they all come together. Number four is Rose Alexandri. Probably my most reached for fragrance aside from Vetiver Babylon or Eau de Jade in this collection. I really love the, just this crystalline sweetness, the brightness, the greenness that this rose fragrance has. It's just really quite stunning and very easy to wear. If you're intimidated by rose and you kind of wanted a nice scent as a segue into rose fragrances, that's a great one. It's fantastic. Number three, three, th number three, is Avert Malachite. This one beats out Rouge Malachite and just the fact that that creamy whiteness to me is more intense in this version. Less warm, more cool. Uh, green, again, it's got this like underlying smoothness to this that just smells really divine. I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, number two is New York. This scent was a blind buy. I think this is not the most expensive. Uh, Armani Privé, I know they can get pretty up there for some of like the limited edition ones, which sadly I don't own, but I would like to in the future. But this one I think is close to $400. This is beautiful. It has carrot, it has iris, it's soft, it's sweet, it's complex, it has a presence. It's sexy, it's sophisticated, it's playful. There's so many different beautiful little nuances in this fragrance. It blew me away. Love it for sniff, absolutely fantastic. And that means number one, which should come to no surprise, is Rose de Araby. This is a beautiful blend of rose and woods. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's dry, but there's just a bit of a molten floral undertone to this scent, which I just find to be really divine. On top of it just having sentimental values to me, this is most definitely, I cannot imagine being toppled out of the number one spot. It is just my favorite, one of my top 10 favorite fragrances, one of my top five favorite fragrances. I just adore it. So that's it guys that is my new updated armani Privé collection i can't say words today and i also ranked all of them for you so i kind of had a little different twist on this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section below i know i haven't reviewed all of these but if i have reviewed any of them i will link them in the description box below if you want to check them out if there's anything you would like a dedicated review on let me know in the comment section below or if there's any other armani Privé. Armani Privé <laughs> fragrances you would like me to review, let me know too. I'm always looking to add more to my collection. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!